this chair belongs to a friend of mine, Wanda Whitehead. Uh, she said her daddy used to rock her in this chair when she was a baby. Uh, Green Watts was his name. He, he was blind. He got his eyes put out in the coal mine. Mm. And uh, they had twins not long after that. And he, he was blind and he sat on the porch and rocked them babies in this chair. And she wanted a new bottom put in his back. So that's what me and John are going to do today. I, I see you have some bark over there uh, soaking uh, in that. Uh, so I, I take it you're ready to go? We're ready to go. We'll start it out with this one. What I'd like to do is uh, I'll put me a couple of packs in that just to hold it in place. This end long, so mm -hmm. when we get through, I can just weave that back through under the bottom, mm -hmm. and when it dries, it's there. To, it's there for good, you know. Okay, John, let's lean it back this way, cause I'm going to have to splice now. I figured Dean wants to see how we splice that. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, I guess. Okay, now you cut off the end. Well, for because it would it wouldn't reach. I'd have had to put a splice on the top. You oh, see. got mm -hmm. you. So you want to splice it on the bottom? Right. So what I, you I, did was to bend it over and cut a notch. Just cut a little hole in it. A here. couple of inches up, yeah. a little hole, and then you're going to trim that. Cut that pretty narrow. Mm-hmm. See, I'm gonna have to split this just a little bit. Uh, 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 you don't have much more than an eighth of an inch there, do you? But no, it'll hold. It'll hold though. When it gets dry, it's <laughs> that's equal. Mm -hmm. Push me back over top of the other. Oh, I see. Okay, I see. I'm Let's see, John. We're going to splice that in right here. Mm -hmm. Okay. make the hole you're cutting a slit because you're going to have to pass the width of the next piece through right. there, right? Mm -hmm. How are we looking, John? You're building a new chair frame or whatever. When this starts drying, it just pulls it together even tighter. You seen where this chair was kind of shackly? Mm -hmm. When you get this on there and it dries, it, it, it solids it up. Yeah. Now there, you're still using that razor knife, right? Uh -huh. That razor knife works good on this. That bark's tough. So you've got a pocket knife, but yeah. the razor knife really works better. Works better, yeah. Feel of this versus your dry. Oh, much more pliable. Yeah, it uh, gets about like leather once you soak it, you know. Mm -hmm. 
So even though it was fresh yesterday, you still soak it. Oh yeah. Yeah, because it would it would have dried out. I'm gonna put this back in the water so it'll stay pliable. So how did you put it in yesterday? I put it in yesterday evening. Yeah. Okay, and you soaked it all day. I soaked it. Yeah, I you know I try to soak it overnight. Mm -hmm. Look at this, the color of the water. Mm-hmm. How late in the year can you go and get the the, the uh, bark? Good question. We got some two weeks ago when it wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got some in July one time, and it was tough. So you ain't got but a couple of months in May and June, mm -hmm. half, you know, May and probably half of June. Mm -hmm. Splice again. Let me cut this off. If, if you don't cut stuff like this off, yeah, it'll, split it'll split on you. Okay, now what was it you cut off? Just a little piece of that bark sticking out. It'll. Oh, okay. It'll, like uh, a little splinter right. end or something. Yeah, it'll uh, split on you if you don't get them off. It's just right like a slingshot. You remember as a kid, they cut the gaps out of them where they cut in or two to make a slingshot. Make sure you keep the gaps out because it turned too if you didn't, you know. That's basically what we're doing. Yeah. I hope that the first generations that came in here, if they if they built a they built them a one room cabin or whatever. Make their own nails, you know. Yeah. And by then if they had, had to move or they was wanted to move or whatever, they'd burn the house down and get the nails out of the, that they'd used use them again. That is fascinating. Didn't waste anything. And they often wondered why there's 100, 150 pound ambles in here. Well, you can put two of them across the mule's back and they balance out, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you look at a lot of the things, you can see reasons why they get stuck. So they had to sift through the ashes to find the nails? Well, yeah, yeah. Would, would it not have been easier, wouldn't you think, to have just tried to pull the nails out? Or you couldn't well, because they them, didn't have time? Well, a lot of them head. didn't have time. They probably had some kind of a screen oh, or something. I <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, getting steel to make more nails could have been a problem, too, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a major. Now, we're talking about wooden pegs and things like that that are used as fasteners. Just anything you could do. Steel was a precious commodity at one time. Mine John's bunch. Yeah. You know, that I believe in history, and I, I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, Virginia in the colonial days had a law that you had to be Church of England. And, of course, a lot of the Scots and Irish and whatever who came here were not Church of right. England. Right. That's the reason they left. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And they basically were, they say, pushed to the frontier because they wouldn't tolerate them if they were over on the frontier stopping the Indians, so to speak. Yeah. They, yeah. they didn't want them living among them, no, you might say. Need them out in the frontier. Yeah, I don't know if that's true or not, but uh, it uh, makes sense. <laughs> yeah, right. Right in there. Are you gonna have a? You gonna have to put another run in? No, no. Let's stand it up now. All right. I hate to see that. Okay. That one hole there. I can fix it. Well, it'll cover anyway, probably. That worked fine. Okay. Okay. Now, Dean, we want to go right through under this. On the first first pass, I go over. I go over top of the first piece. Go over top of it. Then I go under two. Over two. Under two. Over two. Under two, over two, 
Okay, Dean. Can you make it? I went over one and then over two, now I'm going under one. Okay. Under the first one. Huh. And then over two, under two. Uh huh. The herringbone pattern. Hmm. A herringbone? I guess that's it. I that's think that's what, what they call it. Yeah. Pretty sure. Well, John knows. Are we right now, John? Yeah, let's see, man. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay, pull it hard. Pull it hard. Well, this is looking pretty good to me. Mm -hmm. ah, I've seen it move. Yeah, I've got all of it. I've got all of it. All right, take her back. Okay, when I started out, I went under the first one, or I mean over the first one. Next one went over the first two. Next one went under the first one. Next one went under the first two. So I start over now, over the first one one time. Just start all over with the weave. Where'd you put this? Did you right here under the front, yeah. Go ahead, there you go. Snug it up. All right. That's good, John. Let me, let me do this and then we'll snug it up. Where's the little piece of wood there, Matt? <clears throat> you little block on there. Randy's gonna catch one of them all the time. Catch it. <laughs> 